Hey friends, welcome back to the garden. Today's video is going to be about composting. I've decided to do this video in more of a chat with cat style. So you will get my lovely voice over uh, these helpful clips of the steps that I've taken today on compost day. Step one, clear the area so that you can access your compost. <laughs> like most gardeners, I love to hoard my cardboard. It comes in handy as a weed barrier. Uh, if you're doing a no dig style bed as well, helps for that. It's also wonderful to keep around as an additional brown, like browns and greens that we typically refer to with composting. So I have a paper shredder that when I need to, I can run some, uh, some cardboard through or paper bags and add it to my compost. I've decided I'm gonna check on our Bokashi container over here. I have two different ones that I've kept in these larger pots. I think it's important to agitate the bins or the containers rather every once in a while, make sure that the materials are breaking down appropriately. In the case of our big terracotta looking pot over here, our uh, one over here, I started this Bokashi container brand new with potting mix a little while back, if you remember from our Bokashi video we filmed at the end of February. And after checking it out, it was what I assumed and it has not broken up as quickly as it does in the summer, which is fine, which is fine. I don't particularly mind that it's taking a little while Anything worth it takes time, you know what they say. So I did end up putting the top back on though and, and letting that sit for a bit. All right, these are my compost bins. The garbage can that you'll see here that I've taken the lid off of is an EDC, everyday composter style of uh, container here. What that means is I try to put my kitchen scraps specifically into this container. It has a few holes drilled in to allow water and air to move through the container, but it is more enclosed than say a regular uh, compost container, which is the black one behind it. The benefit to having it enclosed is that it is a deterrent to rodents. So they will be, uh, you know, deterred by being unable to access the kitchen scraps, which in turn means it is a less rodent or a rodent proof uh, type of container. As far as actual composting goes, I haven't noticed that it produces any better or quicker compost than a uh, enclosed regular pile. It is easier for me. Uh, to compost with this type of container, that's for sure. But um, I wouldn't say one was particularly better than the other. I've already taken off the top layer of compost here that had yet to break down. I did have some fresh food scraps on top and I had separated those into other um, containers for now so that I could access the already broken down material farther down in the actual um, EDC. There's definitely uh, larger uh, clumps of uh, grasses and such. For instance, I'm sure we've all run into the scenario where your uh, container or your pot was left out and became, uh, you know, a sanctuary for weeds and it's just a rooty, weedy uh, mess. I typically chop those up a bit and toss them into the composter, keep them wet, and eventually they'll break down. So that was probably an old, an old clump of an old pot. Work smarter, not harder. Pick up the whole trash can <laughs> like I did and just dump it, dump it into the whole, uh, the raised bed. Look at that beautiful footage of fresh, raw compost. <laughs> Not for the faint of heart, 
but uh, it definitely noticed that uh, as is typical with this style composter, it was more wet at the bottom. I don't think this will be a problem. Uh, I typically leave in a lot of Bokashi bran uh, when, I, when I turn the compost to help with these anaerobic conditions that we sometimes find ourselves in. It might be worth it in the future to enlarge the holes at the bottom of that composter, but I don't think I will because I'm worried about, uh, I actually have it up on bricks. I'm worried about the structural integrity if I put too many holes on the bottom. I don't want it to crack and break because I do like being able to pick it up and, and move it as you saw. So I've got this compost out of the bin and I'm working to incorporate it into the raised bed. This bed definitely needs the added nutrition. It is a little bit sandy, uh, I noticed a little dry, so I am trying to work the material actually in the first top few inches of this bed. Just aggressive with it. Normally, I would just lay it out on top and pure, be pretty chill about it, but again, uh, I also noticed some shrews. So I was getting in there and, and messing up their tunnels for sure, just to disturb them uh, and make them feel less welcome. I'm not going to do any rat poisoning or anything crazy like that. I know how that affects the ecosystem, but usually what I do is if I keep the beds wet enough for long enough, they don't like muddy conditions. They prefer a drier soil to dig around in, and unfortunately this, this bed dried out a lot, so they made a little home for themselves. We are on to the next phase of this composting operation. You'll see here I am taking the lid off and then the top layer of this darker black, more traditional style plastic composter you can get. This has a bare bottom that is uh, directly on open soil, which is more traditional. And I would argue it can also be more beneficial for your, uh, you know, your worms and other decomposers to get in there. I'm gonna take off some of this and transfer as much as I can into my EDC. And um, what I'll end up doing is digging in my kitchen scraps. So I'm filling this more or less entirely full with some of this dried out um, compost, unfinished compost that I have in here. As always, hydration is important. I stopped off at the pond to fill up my watering can and in between the layers I, uh, I definitely put some water and we'll close this bad boy up and that'll sit for a little bit. So for the leftover material that I have here at the bottom of this composter, I have enough to fill up two four gallon pots which I will end up layering in my bokashi that I actually have that uh, originally I was going to put this bokashi in our larger uh, pot, but since those bokashi materials have not broken down yet, I don't want to overcrowd that container. Plus we got some perfectly good containers available and it's just easier sometimes uh, to have multiple containers going than one massive one. Another option would have been to layer in the bokashi in the EDC composter. The only reason I didn't do that is because I want to make sure I still have a place available and ready to accept kitchen scraps. I don't want to put kitchen scraps, especially not in a bare open uh, composter. I don't want to attract any, any mice or rodents. so definitely for the best to either mix them into these separate containers that are not rodent friendly. Uh, other decomposers can get in for sure, um, but I just do not like putting food scraps, at least not, not anymore, in any of these, uh, these larger open air composters. Really trying to deter the voles and shrews that currently live in my garden. I'm putting on the last top layer here. Uh, I like to make the top layer, probably the tallest layer above the food scraps, just
just to make sure, again, nobody's sniffing anything out. And even still, sometimes I'll put uh, cardboard on top with like a brick to help hold it down. Aha, uh -huh. gotta rinse out the Bakashi bin, get all those goodies, all those beneficials into the actual containers. And even though the Bokashi food scraps are wet, a lot of the soil and material that I put in these bins is rather dry, so the extra water is fine. At the very bottom of this bin, I had a lot of good wood chips that had broken down that I decided would be perfect for a mulch layer on top of this raised bed. And it looks pretty good if I do say so myself. So we push this out and around uh, the bottom layer that of compost that's in there and this should add plenty of nutrition back to the bed. Look at that. Well, all that work, all those months for one two by eight bed. <laughs> but it's fun, it's a good process. I like composting. I do it more so for the environment than for any other reason. And there's definitely a sense of satisfaction that goes with it. Thank you so much for coming out today and taking a look at the composting process. Catch you next time.